r slash s credit. People who have had to start life over again, from bad addictions, divorce, losing your job, etc. What happened and how are you now? What happened? I was, literally, slowly going insane in my situation. After college I had an, initially, very rewarding but low paying job at a not for profit. To save money I lived with my parents. Things started off pretty well but then two things happened. One was my mother decided she was tired of having me live at home, but she didn't tell me outright, she just started to become more and more difficult. And I got a new boss at my job who wanted me gone, but couldn't fire me, so he decided to make my life miserable enough that I would quit. My mother was really a piece of work. She made a rule that I could only sit in one particular place in the living room, and it depended on the time of day, couch in the morning, one particular armchair in the evening. She would wear my clothes and leave them in a filthy pile in her room and eat the food I had bought without asking. She forbade me from reading the newspaper with my breakfast, this was a long time ago, when we read actual papers. She would yell at me all the time about how I didn't take good enough care of her. A bunch of crazy stuff. Meanwhile, my boss at work was taking away one task after another from my job and transformed it from a very dynamic and challenging research position to just data entry all day, every day. He would also regularly humiliate me in front of my colleagues. Everyone saw what was happening, but nobody felt they could do anything about it. I didn't know what to do, I felt I couldn't move out and quit my job, so I just stayed trying to figure out what to do. Also, I was so involved in the power struggles with my mother and my boss that I lost all perspective on taking care of myself. Eventually I became so depressed I could barely function, even my organs started giving up one by one. What helped? The one person on my side was my dad, and he said he would pay for therapy and I started that, and that's when things started turning around. In therapy I realized that having a great job turn into an unsatisfying sucky one is a drag, but sort of a normal level drag, even with a crazy boss. The situation with my mother was genuinely toxic and might eventually literally kill me if I decided to commit suicide, which was looking pretty good at the time. My therapist taught me how to break the cycle of the power struggle and let my mother win by granting her wish that I leave. I realized I needed to move to save my own life, so started saving. Eventually, I got a house sitting gig for one year. I still had to pay the mortgage, which was almost my entire net income, but it was less than rent and the house was full non-perishable food, they just left it. I lived mostly on onions, lentils, 99 cent store curry powder, and whatever I could scavenge from the house or otherwise. I brought containers with me and snuck the bread home from restaurants, I took sugar and ketchup packets, everything I could. After that I moved into a rat infested tenement railroad apartment, which had its downsides, but I had a little more disposable income and could at least afford some tofu. But all of it was much better than living with my mother. As for the job, I saved up my sick and vacation time so, when I finally quit I had a 6 week pay leave. To plan my next step, they no longer allow this, but at the time you could do it. How things went from there, I ended up getting another research position, a real one this time, in the same place, but another department. With the help of my therapist I got the confidence to follow my dream, to go back to school and become a biologist. Since then I have lived all over the world and worked at some of the finest academic institutions there are doing wonderfully rewarding scientific research. I'm hardly wealthy but make a very good living and have walked away from several toxic jobs right into much better ones because I have the skills and the background to do that now and the fuck you money I didn't have before. I was able to build a new relationship with my mother with enough emotional distance that I was unaffected by her craziness but allowed me full access to the rest of my family. Things were pretty fucking awesome for a while. Now things have come back to haunt me a bit. Firstly, I love being a scientist, but I don't work in a field or an institution where there are many other women scientists. As I have moved up there are fewer and fewer women at my level, and it does feel lonely and isolating. That is my only regret there. 
the issues with my mother are harder because she is quite old now and having a lot of very serious health problems, most of the mental. As the only child, the work to care for her in her old age falls to me. It has been hard because, probably needless to say, that period we lived together as adults wasn't the only time in my life that she treated me sadistically. I'm looking for a way now to take care of her enough that she can survive okay and I can keep my mental equilibrium. I guess this kinda counts. I lost my job and my boyfriend broke up with me within 2 months or so in 2012. Looking back now, the relationship wasn't going anywhere, but it was still devastating, especially since I was already down from being unemployed. Thankfully Elle was still living with my parents, so food and rent weren't an issue, but I was dealing with a maximum doubt credit card. I got super depressed, my sleep schedule shifted by almost 12 hours, so I'd sleep all day and stay up all night. I'd go days without leaving the house or really even talking to anyone. This lasted from the breakup in mid-October to the end of November. By that point I had given up on trying to find a job. My aunt, who at that point I wasn't super close with, sent me a text one night asking if I was still looking for a job. Someone within the unit was looking for temp help. I started December 10th. They pushed me to go back to school because it was one of the only fast and solid ways to secure a permanent position. Government hiring is a bitch. Spent the next two years working full time with a full time online school schedule. It was hell, but I pushed through and graduated. I've been permanent since July 2015 and hit my 5 year milestone in December. I'm in the process of getting a promotion. I've just started therapy to deal with lifelong anxiety issues. I was diagnosed with an inflammatory arthritis just over a year ago, and I'm finally at the point in treatment where I'm not in pain anymore. I just got my own apartment down the street from work eliminating a 45 minute one way commute and adopted a rescue kitten two weeks ago. Life is finally good just in time for me to hit the big 320. When I was 20, I lost my fiancé and unborn son to a miscarriage with complications. To say it was devastating is an understatement. I dropped out of college and did nothing for a year. Went back to university and left after two years. I just couldn't be motivated. Whatever I had before they went was gone. I moved back home to care for my grandmother and after she passed away, her house was sold. So I was left with literally no ties at all. At that point I was fairly suicidal, so I decided to travel around and see the world for a bit before I died. One last hurrah lads. Went traveling for a year and a half across Asia and Australia before I ran out of money and was forced to return home. Returned home to literally nothing but my semi-decent car. So I lived in the car for about three and a half years. That was hard, but I didn't really feel anything by that point, I was just kind of numb inside. I had tried many times to find steady work over the years, but I was unsuccessful mostly until I finally got a job delivering pizza. Hey I guess my card had finally come in handy. Stuck with that shitty ass job for 5 years, most stable job I've ever had, manager was very forgiving, work my way into housing then into a flat, into a new car and now have a sweet gaming lounge with all the latest stuff. I'm still alone though, and I'm still dead inside. To be honest I don't quite know what I'm working for. Perhaps in the hope that someday I might find that feeling again. It's not looking too good though as most of my peers are married with kids it now. I guess you could say I've had to start over several times in different ways. They say life isn't about the ending it's the journey, right? Fuck the journey. I had been with my husband since I was 19 years old. I'm 36 now. After 14 years of what I thought was a happy marriage, a 19 year old from a previous relationship, or 3 year old, and a 1 year old, he rolled over in bed the day after Christmas 2017 and told me he met someone else and was leaving us for her. He left us with no income as I'm a stay at home mom. At his request, bills piled high and had the electricity shut off in his name until the courts order him to pay. I'm doing okay, emotionally, but hurt for my kids. He is frequently late, 
forgets to call them, and puts her and her daughter above them in every way. The struggle is unreal. I'm picking up the pieces where I can. Applied for help in public housing, looking for a job, no one wants to hire someone who's been home so long, and battling in court. My parents are helping me with a lawyer. It's just hard. But I don't have a choice other than standing strong and starting over. I'll win in court. I have a stack of evidence and things against his case. But it still doesn't replace the father my children are losing. I have a great emotional support system. One particular friend is holding me up pretty well. He's my rock. He's been through something similar and knows the struggle. I will get back on my feet and raise these kids with the morals and integrity they need to be compassionate and caring human beings. I flew 3000 miles across the country to sell a house we'd been renting out. She called me two weeks into that trip and told me not to come home. She'd started sleeping with a few different coworkers and she wanted a divorce. So I suddenly lived 3000 miles away. I never returned. I really had nothing. And yet I didn't want anything from her but to walk away and forget it happened, so I signed pretty much everything over to her. She sent me everything of mine in three boxes and I started it all over. I lived with family for about six months before I picked myself up and found a place to live with a coworker I had just met. That turned out to be the best decision I ever made. I worked hard at sometimes 3 or 4 jobs to afford to live and eventually worked my way up in one of those jobs to a full time position in a field I loved. It took about 4 years, but I finally moved on. My ex-wife was remarried 6 months after our divorce and struggled through a number of miscarriages with her new husband before finally having a baby. I didn't learn this till recently. Hearing how hard things had been for her, someone I once loved but spent years harboring, not just pain and sorrow, but actual anger and rage toward, it all kind of faded away. I had lived with jealousy and anger that somehow she cheated and got to have her fairytale life. But learning what she had to go through helped me face those negative emotions I'd been avoiding and helped me finally forgive her, because as much I felt I didn't deserve the pain of her betrayal, no one deserves to lose so many potential children. Truly now I hope she lives the life she wanted, because our marriage was not a good one to begin with. I haven't found anyone new here that lasted more than few months, but an old flame who lives long distance who I've been in love with since I was a teenager is finally coming to see me and potentially move where I live to be with me. The main thing I learned is that you can't plan your life. It will always happen in ways you can't predict or don't expect. And that, more often than not, the horrible thing you think ruined your life may just be the catalyst that changes everything for the better in the end. You just have to still be willing to work for it. My husband divorced me 8 years ago. He got the house and the business. I had been a stay-at-home mom for 10 years. I had two young children to raise and had no family in town to help me with childcare as I transitioned back into the workforce. It was 2009 and the height of the recession. The last 8 years have been one gigantic pile of sucktitude. I have been able to find nothing but part time and or temporary work. Worked as a massage therapist, the spa went bankrupt, and we all lost our jobs. Worked part time at my daughter's school. $14 an hour, 3 hours a day, no benefits. But I was just filling in for someone on maternity leave, so that only lasted a year. Went back to school and got my electronic health records certification. Finally got a job at the local hospital in medical records. Casual slash on call, so I never knew how many shifts I would get and had a schedule that varied wildly from week to week, which made finding childcare when I needed it very difficult. Was casual slash on call for three and a half years. After working more than half time for more than 90 days, they were supposed to create a permanent, benefited position for me, but they never did. So I went to the union and filed a grievance. They created a regular position for me, but it was part time 24 hours a week. I live in one of the most expensive real estate markets in the country, a place I never liked, by the way. A place my ex wanted to live, and now I'm stuck here, because we have shared legal custody of our kids. I can't raise my kids here on only 24 hours a week. 
I have applied for literally hundreds of other jobs and haven't gotten any of them. Don't know why. Maybe because I'm middle aged, maybe because they think I'm overqualified, I have an advanced degree that has never done anything for me in terms of actually earning a living. I'm so fucking tired. I've been fighting this fucking battle for years now, I'm exhausted. I live in a one bedroom house with my daughter. She sleeps in the bedroom, I sleep in the unheated, uninsulated garage. I have to move this year. My landlord wants to remodel. I'm barely making it now, if I move, my rent is going to double. I have applied to child support services, to go after my ex for more child support. He is self employed, and when we divorced, he lied about his income. I have the financial documents to prove it. His income is triple what he claimed at the time. So, we'll see what happens. Maybe that will help. But it's hard to feel positive about my future or anything else. Hard to see any silver linings. Every dream I ever had has crashed and burned to the ground. I just need something good to happen to me. I need to feel like a human being again and not a big gigantic ball of stress. In December of 2014, my senior year of high school, I got sentenced to 2 to 5 years in prison. I was blessed to be able to finish high school on house arrest and be released from jail in 9 months after my sentencing. It is my experience that, regardless of the circumstances, there is always an opportunity to appreciate the magnificence of tomorrow's sunrise. I look at it like this. When life throws you down and you are traveling towards rock bottom, there are three ways to interpret what happens next. Some people see the floor and land so hard that it shatters their soul a bit. Some people never see the floor, they keep falling and falling and they lose themselves little by little in the process, they never escape, that feeling of free fall, which isn't so free in a way. Some people, on the other hand, won't accept that their momentum is downward, and they instead replace the floor with a trampoline. As they hit, they bounce back, just as far up, and fast as they fell down. What I'm trying to say, is that the human mind, is a powerful thing. Within us all there is a limitless potential to make something out of our hardships, losses, and adversities. I'm now a sophomore in college going to school for genetics and developmental biology. Will I find a job in my field as a felon? Almost certainly not, but I'll be damned if I don't allow myself to keep the momentum I found along the way. Got divorced three years ago. Basically completely blindsided me. We went from having a decent sex life, lots of dates, fun couples activities, etc to her cheating on me in 2 months. We had been talking about having kids, but I wanted her to get her financial shit in order first. Lots of bad decisions in her teen slash early 20s left her with about $50k of debt. She hid this from me for years, up until I said we needed to make a financial plan to have kids and she fessed up. I had just started my master's degree and decided that the best thing to do would be to finance her debt into my student loans so she could start rebuilding her credit and we could maybe buy a house in the next few years. Then she found out a friend of hers was pregnant. This friend was in med school and her husband was in school also and worked and financially they appeared to be in a worse place than we were. This basically demotivated her to the point that she started cheating on me. I was crushed. I was in love with this woman and had just taken on basically all of her debt into student loans and she had gone and done this to me because I wanted to be responsible and have a plan for our kids. Three years out, I'm in denial some days, but the reality is I'm not over her. She was my definition of physical perfection and to have the person I would have entrusted my life to ditch me for another guy was just soul crushing. I can't trust any woman now. It's truly hindered my and made me extremely cynical about relationships. I can't seem to date anyone without being committed to the relationship and not think about only myself and make decisions only for me. I have a better job now, but it all feels hollow. I seek happiness and things and new hobbies, but nothing seems to fill the void that's there. My situation likely wasn't nearly as bad compared to others, but here it is. Almost 3 years ago I broke up with my girlfriend of nearly 7 years. 
I hadn't been happy for a while, and when we moved to a new city I became even more miserable. I hated my job, the city and basically any time I was awake. I wanted to date other girls, because I never really got a chance to do that before. I also wanted to try living independently. Turned out trying to make it on your own without any connections in a different city can be incredibly difficult, and for the most part every woman I had worked up the courage to pursue weren't interested. Well I regretted my decision and wanted to get back with my ex just a few months later, by which point she had already started dating someone else. If I was miserable before I was near suicidal now, I felt like I just fucked everything up that was good in my life and was left with nothing to be happy about. Fortunately I ended up going to therapy and here I sit 3 years later feeling much better. It's not to say everything is wonderful, but I'm definitely in a better place than I was before. I'm content in the present moment, the city I once hated I have grown to love, and I've even developed a small group of friends. Looking back the decision I made, and the aftermath of everything that followed, was one of the most difficult times of my life, but it has also shaped who I'm today, and instilled me with a sense of purpose and confidence I don't think I could have acquired without going through it. About this time last year I began to have heightened anxiety, not sleeping for days, and making really dangerous choices in life, drugs, alcohol, getting tattoos, going off the grid for days at a time. I also wasn't eating, and was extremely thin. Turns out I was suffering from manic episodes, and was later diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Before my diagnosis, I had gotten pregnant and had a miscarriage two days before I took my LS80. Had never worked so hard for anything in my life. I didn't tell anyone about the miscarriage for three weeks. I told my family and they didn't talk to me for a while. During that time I also had another health scare and had to get an MRI for a scare of a brain tumor. Thank god I was cleared for that. I was eventually kicked out of my sister's wedding, which was humiliating. Then came my diagnosis, when I attempted suicide. My family hasn't been able to understand how to help, so they have pretty much given up on me. With that said, I somehow still have a job working at law firm as a paralegal. Today I've had to learn to be completely independent, which has been eye-opening. My family was usually there, to fall back on and baby me a little bit, if I'm being honest. Recovering from drug abuse has been difficult. I still struggle with the alcohol, but it's getting better. Getting treatment and working on getting back to where I was with my mental health has been trying, but I've come a very long way. I pretty much had to start at square one in the last few months. In the grand scheme of things, I think I'm doing alright, given the circumstances. I was in a very emotional abusive relationship with someone who was mentally unstable. I tried to get us help so that we can find ways to resolve our problems. He turned against me and hurt me to the point that I ended my lease on my apartment early out of fear he would hurt me again. My friend took me in and I was alone with all this negative energy and hate for how he hurt me. I turned to alcohol, sex with a lot of men, and drugs. My roommate was never around because she had a boyfriend and my friends were busy with their own lives. My family lives far from me, but they tried their best to be there during the lonely times. As far as the ex he stalked me and called me when I was trying to move on with my life, and it hurt me that he kept coming around, even when he was already in a new relationship. I knew I had to be strong. Fast forward to now, my roommate moved out to live with her boyfriend, and I took it as a sign that I had to leave too. This happened two weeks ago. I wished her the best to find love with her boyfriend, and it was time for me to close the chapter on my old life. I found a great apartment in a whole new area of the city, and it was very close to my job. I could feel like life was turning around for the best. I had my good job, and now a good place to live. This was the best part though, so since moving out last week from my apartment, the owner contacted me about some straight mail. I told him I would pick it up, and he said he would have it for me. The next day I get a text from an unknown number telling me about my mail. It was my ex. It sent an utter shock to me of why he would try to contact me after months of no contact, and how did he know about my mail. 
I started to think, and I came to the conclusion that he must be moving into my old apartment. I contacted the owner and asked him if his new tenant was my ex. He admitted to it, and it sent chills down my spine. Now that I knew what he was doing, it was time for me to be an adult. I messaged my ex back and told him that I'm going to to forgive him for what has happened and let go of any sort of anger I had to him. I wished him and his boyfriend the best in their new life at the apartment. I could see that this was the universe challenging me in understanding that I no longer was the same person that lived in that old apartment. I had move on and it leveled me up to be the mature adult that I could be. I felt things changing and my perception changing. After we said what we needed to say, I decided that this moment is where that old life closes and now I'm stepping into something bigger for me. The ex did teach me one thing. I do believe in love and I will find love again, but I needed to work on myself first. It was time to love myself again. I can't wait for the future and what it holds. I will live each day with confidence that I'm making myself a stronger person. I survived an abusive relationship and I stood up to it when it tried to break me. I will be me again, but this time a better version of me. Thank you so much for watching the whole video. Please leave a like and subscribe.